All righty, guys. One more match for it all. Time to get the ladies on the stream one more time. Ladies, getting us going here. We got Chris and Paula going at it here. Tink versus Murphy. Excited to see how this one plays out. It is going to be a race of six format. Chris did best out Kim Pantai in that semi-final there off screen. Do apologize about that, that we were not able to get any of the semis on the stream there. Unfortunately, that is just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, and that's going to be all right. We're here for the finals now, and it's time to give these ladies the spotlight they deserve. Do you know uh, Paula's been trying to keep herself warm? Her semi finished just a little bit before this one. Um, so trying to keep herself going, keep the energy levels up. I know for a fact I can feel you there, Paula. Grace has been throwing, and that was a tough hot match. She was up three to one, and then uh, ended up uh, being a lot closer knit of an affair there, but did come out on top. So we'll see how this one plays out here. There's going to be no fooling around for these girls as they want to go ahead and get some good darts in the board. How about that from Paula? 160 there. We'll take that. That's some bonus money on those darts. Chris just going to get herself settled. And I do know uh, there's still a fair amount of you guys tuning in with us in the late hours here. So I do appreciate each and every one of you taking your time to hang out, watch some darts. I do know there's a couple of you guys uh, watching here a lot of times. I did see in the hall as well. So I do appreciate the conversations I got to have with uh, each and every one of you. Last start there, good from Paula, 95. Already on at 150. Chris is going to be thinking to herself, hey, you need to hit something big. You need to hit something big. But it's leg one here. You want to just make sure you're getting settled more so than anything else. That being said, an 85, not a bad go at the board there. Do want to also give a shout out, although this hall has zero other matches going on, there are still people here coming by to support the ladies in the finals. I know uh, on the left-hand corner there on uh, the partial camera view, that's mostly the Tink corner from my understanding. And on the right-hand side, just out of the field of view, will be the Paula corner over there. So it's really... Uh, it's a it's a good feeling, right, when you uh, get to watch the room dwindle down after you've been fighting all day, having a good tournament run. It's one of those things that uh, lets you know that you're doing something right and accomplishing something. Um, but on the other hand, you know, it is hard to keep that same level of ferocity and intensity when it's not a full and lively room, but a somber um, one that is winding down for the evening. So having people in your corner supporting you, keeping you engaged with the match, and keeping you uh, centered in a time where it's easy to get lost in the sauce definitely helps. Paul there does not get to the double 19, but was clicking the wire. She does go ahead and tee up, but pulls it a little too far and accidentally leaves at 13 instead of 16 going into the double there. She's always been a fan of her 19, so any 19 first shot she can take, she will take. Chris back at 216. We'll have to get it back in line by trying to leave herself an out and hope for some double trouble from Paula for leg number one. Paula here, 13 5 for double four. Grabs the five, too clear. It's going to be okay with that dart. Does get it in there, though. Paula grabbing the double four. Kristen saying, this is a long day of darts, but it's a great day of darts, though, isn't it, Kristen? Always excited to be being in coverage of our phenomenal ladies on the board, and they deserve full commentary, full coverage for their final. There was no way we were going to dip out of here. We said, we'll tough it out for a little bit. The 
Let's see if Tink's able to get her course corrected here, get things done right. Wasn't far off in the last leg, was just having trouble getting yourself in range for that out setup. Sorry guys, had a fan trying to take a selfie with me there. It was a very awkward timing. <laughs> that fan being Jeff McMahon. The number one fan. Paula kind of shrugging it off. I do know she was having uh, some, I don't know if it's pains or discomfort in her shoulder. I saw it kind of like working on it on the side there. Um, as I was actually sitting watching some of the matches there and then watching some of the warm-ups right before it. And it looked like it was, I don't know if it's just from a long day of playing or whatever else it may be, but it definitely seems to be bothering her. You can tell just by her stretching there and doing some calisthenics in the background that it's definitely uh, on her mind at the very least. Sky Johnson saying, awesome, Dave Darts. Will there be a stream tomorrow? Thanks. Yeah, if everything goes according to plan, we do plan to start at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our live stream to start partially in to the Mixed Doubles 501 event. Um, of course, barring any issues with the Internet here, I do know the hotel has had a couple issues with it, and that's what's caused that hour delay start for us uh, this morning. So, yeah, tomorrow we start at 11 a.m. You're going to see mixed doubles at 1 in the morning. In the afternoon, some men's doubles and ladies' doubles cricket. And then also in the afternoon, but just a little bit later on, men's singles cricket and ladies' singles cricket there to round out our coverage. You're going to get the full nine yards here with Jeff and I. Of course, I know uh, a lot of you guys are thinking, man, Jeff just never shuts up on the microphone. I I've been saying the same thing. Just kidding. He's been doing a great job here hanging out. And think about this. His, you guys have to listen to me for a match or two at a time before you go back and do what you're doing. He's had to listen to me talk for, I don't know, let's see, about uh, almost 12 hours now. Uh, and I feel bad for his ears. In the YouTube comments here, Paula uh, says, uh, Paula in the final, who would have guessed that? LOL, she's so good. Yeah, she is. We did get to see her and Danny Baggish do a big sweep there in the uh, women's match earlier on, and then she actually fell shy of getting into the finals um, for the women's doubles there. So Paula so far has three event wins with the ladies pro singles, the USS DA singles, and the mixed doubles cricket. This would make for her fourth title and make her four for five if she wins it here. Chris, on the other hand, trying to get herself on the board and get one of those coveted pieces of hardware. All here. Of course, going on her 19s was looking for six 19s to leave the double bowl, but that will be all right. She's not happy with that last start going into the five there. But again, getting herself out in front, uh, just keeping the pressure on Chris where she can, getting herself to a two dart finish. Chris here, gonna have to make sure she gets on and out. Put some pressure on this. She's obviously very capable. She's won some big games on the way here. She's done some really good stuff on the board. She just has a couple more darts to go. She, it, The way you have to think about it is just three darts at a time. Try to get one leg at a time here. First to six is, means that you have plenty of time to try to figure it out. You just want to avoid that John Part rule that is so famously talked about in a steel tip where you don't want to get further from your opponent in leg differential than it is to the win for them. So just think about it like that. And that's exactly right now. It's just down one leg. She's on a finish. Paul here has to regroup. She needs to go triple 19 for double 12. She does love her 19s, though. 
Would have put it past her. We'll get the shot. Almost binks it there. One five two now you feel like does have to go. Trouble twenty, trouble twenty four, double sixteen will be the look. Just going to have to regroup. I do like that she didn't break her concentration after the frustrating first start. Because you do know that first start is a little frustrating, knowing that you have to hit a big finish and not clicking on that wire. Good way for her to just try to bounce back and not show any emotion there. I do think that's what uh, can lead to some fortuitous situations. Paul here does drop into the nine there. So 15 remaining. See what she decides to do here. Seven. She was going seven for double four. That's 14. What a left one. So it did bust there. She is confirming it real quick, but it is a bust. One, two, six here. You can see Chris kind of just taking that extra moment here. There is a pretty clear route to go. It is going to be a 19 first route. Four 19s does leave you the shot at the bull. If you, of course, if you're too good and you hit six 19s there, you'll get a shot for the double seven. You can see she took her first out of the 20, so no chance for a shot now. Eighty-six remaining. Trip eighteen should be the dart. Looks like there was a split between minds there on that one. Dead center on the one. Double twelve for Paula Murphy to go to a two zero lead. Barely not in there. It almost looks like it will its way through the wire. Does decide to split here. And does pay off with the split there. That's a very risky split with the opponent on a two dart out. But does get it there. 2-0 lead for Paula Murphy in this final so far. You can see Alex Spellman in the background there, successfully back from Miller's Ale House, not sponsored. Uh, did have a good uh, little dinner over there. Did have a chat with him before he left. Did a little mini interview with him. Hopefully you guys will get a chance to see tomorrow. By the way, Jeff Paula likes 19s a lot. <laughs> Does find 95 there on the start. I will say, Paula has been struggling a little bit this tournament, and she will admit that I say that as she has already won three events, by the way. Um, but struggling by the standard of which you would see her at normally. I think right now she definitely looks the most collected and the most put together on her darts. Uh, and is definitely turning upwards. Chris here just trying to keep herself composed on the dartboard once again. I have no issues with someone taking their time, but you just don't want to keep psyching yourself out, right? You want to make sure you're just keeping your head clear, not just trying to calm yourself down. You're not going to be happy with that last start, but you can kind of see with her hand gesture there, right? She's saying, hold on, hold on, slow it down. I think she's aware of where her head's at and is just trying the best to execute where she can.
Chris here can close the gap. 50 point separation between these girls. Good second dart there. Can she follow with another? Right on it. 81 there. Good course correction for Tink. Chris and Paula neck and neck, finding the first one in the treble bed. Just keeping herself on a nice steady pacing here. Well-thrown darts, getting a ton on the board there for Tink. Tinkerbell, but her shirt says Drinkerbell. Having a good time as always. Well, Chris here not on a finish with the 162, but can put some damage in here and put a lot of pressure here on Paula Murphy. She's going to be keen to try to get herself below 100 here. Not going to be able to do so. Does help lower the score to there. 54 on the turn. 124 here for Paula. Trouble 18 for Bullseye. Bullseye is the look for Paula Murphy. She said, wake up, people. I'm right on the wire here. Good look at it. Getting yourself down to 25 and putting a lot of pressure here on the 108. You can still go 20s first here. Single 20 leaves you 88, which you can stay for the 14. If you hit a trouble, then you can just go 8 for tops. You can go for a lot of different routes from there. You can go 16 for double 16. The key is to not get in it to the five here. The one still leaves you an out, though. So no five, no trip one. Single 18 will leave 90, so trip 18 for double 18. I do like that route as well. I do, I'm do. i just uh, 18 uh, phobic. I'm afraid of it. I uh, don't even plan a lot of my outs around it for the most part. Uh, just because I always struggle, and I usually block myself out when aiming at it. So it's one of those things where I realize as a commentator, I'm like, yeah, you should probably consider the 18 routes more for other people that uh, are not weird in the head and can actually just shoot 18s and not think about it too much. Paul there hits 17 for double four. <laughs> she is lethal on that double four, currently up 3-0 to zero in this final so far. You can see there, zero hesitation. Puts a little umph on it, and he gets it there and has a throw in this leg. So far, she's doing a lot right. She's three legs away from the win, three legs ahead of Chris here. And like we talked about, that John Part rule is uh, you don't want her to get this fourth leg here. You need to get a leg on the board if you're Chris, because at that point, you're 
fighting against time almost, it seems, when someone gets that close to the finish line uh, when you're that far away. There's no reason to give up hope, though. She has the ability. She has the darts. And she beat some very talented ladies on the way here. Let's be honest. As you can see, uh, Paula and Kim having a conversation over there. Kim did lose the tank in that previous round, but stayed to support her uh, best friend there with Paula Murphy. Look at Tink here, finding a good 100 to get things going here. One of those course-correcting shots. The one thing that is good about Tink's game, and there's multiple things that are good. Let me rephrase that immediately. But the one thing that I'm looking at right now in this moment is that she is really good at self-pacing. So it doesn't really seem like her previous rounds are forcing her next rounds to be shaky one way or the other. She's taking the same time. Taking that deep breath before going to the line and taking about the same time between each darts. Trying to get herself composed here. It's interesting that she does do that double clutch type of motion where um, you move your hand forward and backwards um, twice. Uh, but on the first bring, she brings it out. Then on the last bring, she actually strains the dart. So if you look at her throw, we'll kind of talk about it on her next go there. It is interesting because that is, I feel like, one of the difference makers in when she's hitting versus otherwise is just getting that same point position. Having a laugh there. I think the trucker had a reaction to the popped flight. I think she jumped. So yeah, that's what Paula just uh, pantomime there. Do you want to give a shout out? I do believe Laura from the tournament staff is actually seven up to the plate here to chalk this final. So big ups to her on that one. As I know, uh, you know, it's the end of the night's last match. It's not always the most uh, tantalizing thing to chalk a match, especially one that has the capability of going the distance between two very capable ladies. Good dart there for Chris. And finds a 140 in there. Stacking right on top of that first dart. Well thrown. Getting yourself a 201. You're getting yourself ahead in this leg. And you can see that average gap slightly closing. I'm sure if you uh, looked at Paula's stats when she's in form, she is easily in the mid to high 70s range pretty consistently. This weekend, she has been kind of stuck towards those uh, uh, high 50s, low 60s in averages for matches. Uh, it's just one of those things where, I mean, it's a combination of multiple factors. But I do know um, she has some personal stuff in life going on and that she's just really trying to focus on getting her game back to where she would want it to be. There's no shame in that. Sixty there from Chris does leave her at the one four one. Now at three oh two, you'd see most players here go eighteens. Paul here electing to go twenties. The reason is four eighteens for trip twenty leaves you one seventy there. A lot of the reasons why you see those players considering those math and, and it's just something you should always try to keep in mind. Um, there's also nothing wrong with going for the trip twenty on the first start, then switching to the eighteens or just staying on there if you're feeling particularly comfortable. Um, but with Chris being on the out, I would have probably preferred the 18's first shot there to give herself an outside looking in chance if the 1-3-2 does uh, get hit for her. Chris here, trip 20, trip 19, double 12 is the shot. You can see she's taking the extra moment to consider her outs. We saw with the 1-2-6 that she went uh, a non-traditional route. It start at the 19s there. One, three, eight remaining. So you're just going to try to focus on staying even and bringing down. So one, three, five. 
does go down, hits the trip three there. I wouldn't have honestly minded the use of the bull there for the single bull to leave the 110. I'm a big uh, believer in utilizing the bull for many shots, especially when in doubt when you're below 200 and you are odd at trying to get even. It's not a bad way to consider it, um, especially if you're not as comfortable with your mass. Good find on the last start there for 97 for Paula. Gets her within striking distance. Now, Chris here did not shoot the 19th first on the 126. We'll see if she does it on this go or if she's going to go back to the 20s like she did on that previous attempt here. She does have that little corner of friends watching. I say little. It's actually quite large considering there's no one else in the hall. Did go to the 18s this time there to leave 108. So it doesn't leave a finish after one dart there. And just pulls it down. 26 scored there. So leaves herself at 100, though. 164. Paula loves her 19s. Trip 19, trip 19 for Bullseye. Yeah, she, you can tell she really wanted that one to go in. Of course she did. Of course she did. I don't think I've ever met a dart player that doesn't want a dart to go in. I'm starting to give my John Madden level of commentary here as we get to uh, the late night session of commentary where my commentary goes from bad to worse. Trip 20 for double top is the look. No look at 99 here, so we'll have to even up. Looks like that is into the 19 there. No, it's into the 7. Trip 7, it looks like. No, it was a single 7. My eyes deceive me. Paul here with 106 on her look. Over to the 18s. Not going to go now. 68 remaining here. Back to the 20s to leave double four. Yeah, she wanted to try to leave double four. I mean, she's already hit two double fours in at this match so far, including a purposeful split where she went for four double four instead of going for the double six. Trip 17 for double 18 will be the look here. You can definitely tell Tink doesn't seem as comfortable with her outs. Definitely not as comfortable as Paula, but I would say most of our players aren't as comfortable with their outs as Paula is. She is a seasoned veteran for a reason. 84 remaining. I would take the trip 20 for double 12 here. Now at 64 here, you go back for the trip 16. Uh, if you hit it, leaves you double eight. Does go up there and hits the trip eight, which is also fine because that leaves you 40. Well, Paula here is going to try to get herself an out. Was well, going bull for double top. 55 means 15 for double top now. We'll get a dart for it. Doesn't go. So now Chris gets an opportunity here to get a leg on the board. You can see wiping the darts, wiping her hands. A little bit of nerves, a little bit of exhaustion playing a factor here. Does hit it on the first dart. You can see a clap in the background there as Tink gets a leg on the board and making it 3-1 to one here in this final. She said, hey, I heard that kid talking about that John Part rule. I ain't going to let that happen. Good job there for her, and she will get the start on this leg. Ashley Ritchie in the chat saying, let's go, Paula. 
Uh, Ashley, I will say, well, first off, uh, shout out to the skipping in the background there. Uh, secondly, Ashley, it's very rude of you to walk into camera view with leftovers from Miller's and not bring any to the commentary room. Very much a taboo. And uh, that's it. I'm going to start saying bad words about you all the time now. Just kidding, Ashley. All the love, all the love. Hope you guys had a good dinner. And yeah, we're going to be trying some local restaurant here. I just will put an order in for uh, it's a mom and pop shop called Wawa. Never heard of it. Chris here out in front. Definitely finding your stride here. Actually, you just said, haha, that was a to-go order for someone else, implying that you were taking orders. That's that's even crazier. Oh, oh, I, oh, and then you immediately come. I would have grabbed you food. All the love. I'm just giving you a hard time. Absolutely. I can't eat. I'm eating on these good darts we're watching on the stream. I'm feasting off it, if anything. Plus, we all know I'm starting to look a little rounder than the dartboard nowadays, so I probably shouldn't. Be having too much to uh, going out food. Let's be real. Do you see over a hundred of you guys still tuning in with us? Do appreciate that. And these ladies do deserve it. Each and every one of you watching along. They're here. They're playing really hard, really tough darts, trying hard to put on a good show. Not only for you guys, but also to get some hard work for themselves. I do like that uh, Tink went over to her friends there. She's a little bit more laughy, a little bit more smiley. Means that that's usually some good signs there. Good for the mental at the very least. She was talking about food and ordered some breakfast there, finding only 26. Paula checking waiter 19 is a little bit tough to get that last start in. Yeah, she goes just a little bit high on it, but does find 95. <laughs> you can see Chris back there trying to keep hyped up and dancing. He's saying thanks, Nick the Sheriff, for sticking it out so late. Oh, it's no trouble whatsoever. And also shout out to Jeff McMahon. He's still here, too, on the controls. It's not just me in the booth. It is also the ghost of Christmas Pass. Actually, it looks more like Screech from that movie, if I had to guess. But do appreciate you tuning in here, Keith. Having a good time hanging out with us. And look at that last star cover shot there from Tink. Not bad at all. 97 will do. Paul going to continue to try to pressure Tink's throw, though. Going up to the trip 20 here. Needs to find it to leave a finish. Does not find it. Leaves herself at even 200. So 18 points ahead of Chris on 12 darts each. Yeah, going low on that 20. It was a good look there. But 40 points mean, or no, that is in. My mistake. I'm psyching myself out here. Does leave herself a finish. Great shot from Tink. That one definitely is in from Paula. Going to stay on there to try to leave 60. But leaving 100 will be fine. And then the, the chalk, chalker did jump there, and Paula just goes, it's just a flight to right to her. That is funny stuff. You could have caught it, she said. You could have caught it. If you're curious there, Tink is singing along with the music, I believe, in her earphones. No go now. I'll have to continue to bring it down. Switch downstairs to make it even. Does do so there, finding herself at 98. Paula here at 100. Nice and easy math here. Just got to stay straight. Uh, she says no on that dart there. Not going to be happy with it. Going to see how she corrects. Mm 
98 will be the shot here. Expect probably just a trip 20 to double 19 route here. If I had to guess. 78 now. Going over to the 18s. Yeah, she did go over to the 18s. Now it's 75 here. I think you probably just shoot. You could pro you probably shoot a trip 13. Uh, if you're not sure, just go for the bowl there. Ryan George saying, Nick, I miss you. And he was yelling in the comments. There was some caps lock in there. Ryan George, what's going on, buddy? Great to see you tagging along in here, having some late night dart fun with the rest of us. It's always great to have you tuning along here. Ryan George, uh, Jeff McMahon is very upset that you didn't say hi to him. Caroline saying, thank you, Nick. Uh, enjoying watching this final. Enjoying uh, enjoying having these girls on here for some great darts as Paula Murphy does take that one and two darts. Four to one lead. And uh, excited to see you on the WCS on Monday. Looking forward to that good match here. I told Kevin Luke you better get some rest before getting on that airplane. Ryan George saying, Jeff, I miss you too. Your production looks smooth, buds. <laughs> there you go. Tink has done a good job of picking up her standard. Finding 60 there. Nice solid scoring round. Both these ladies neck and neck, though. Paula's just going to try to capitalize on having her throw. Make Tink feel the pressure. Just go for some solid scoring rounds. Taking advantage of her comfortability on the 19s here. Let's see how many she can get. 95 will do. Again, every dart adds that little bit of pressure. Every point you get ahead does so, so good. As Ryan's making me blush here in the chat. <laughs> you guys are all making me blush here. You guys are being very, very nice. I'm going to think you guys have all must have had a sip or two before we're tuning into our live show. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Good last start there for Chris. Finding the 100. These girls are neck and neck still. No one on the breakaway. Paul's going to just try to play off the first start there. Now it's going to be a little bit more awkward. So Chris here can try to seize this moment. Again, just three big singles here. If they fall into the trip, that's even better. But it's the nice steady play you kind of have to be focusing on, especially, like, when you, again, you look at your average, right? And not that you should be paying too much attention to your average while you're playing, as she does go ahead and finds the trip. Hold on. Oh, my goodness, does deflect out. Looks like that would have been 100. When you look at their averages, right, both these girls are right around that 60 mark. That means that you're probably better off going for that top side wire. It's not aim for singles. I'm not saying that. I'm saying aim for that top side wire. Try to get some more favorable fallouts. And then if they start falling into the trip, you can start playing around to that adjustment. And that's exactly what's kind of happening here with these ladies. Finding 95 there for Paula. Nikki's saying someone has to make up for Will and Sean. Hey, we, we don't say those names here. Uh, this is truly a B-team production between Jeff and I, and we don't need to hear about those supposed A-team guys on the production. Who 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 is Will Stewart anyways? Never even heard of him. Sean, Brown. Sean Brown's actually his cousin. Paula here can be the first one out of finish. Does leave a finish there at 112. <laughs> Ryan George Art Square definitely did make its mark as well. You know that. Let's see if Tink's able to leave herself a finish here. 215 remaining. Needs to stay true. Single 15 doesn't leave an out. So you, this is a shot where normally you see a lot of players try to utilize that bull. 
60 there doesn't leave it. Five points shy with Paula on a finish. Probably would have preferred the use of the bull there. Not going to come into play on this particular throw unless that one went in, but it almost did. She opted to not shoot the double six last time, so I doubt she's going to stay on the 20s. Yeah, it goes over to the trip 16 there. Beautiful switch at that 88 on the score. And yourself at double 12. Chris on the outside looking in here. Oh, just catching on the wrong side of the wire for Chris. You even heard the clink of it. Double 12. Will be the shot for Paula for a 5-1 advantage and get herself on match points. Does get it in one dart there. Paula Murphy... Is 501 points away from another title and to go four for five. Tink here needs to go ahead and just say now or never. Take all the risks, you know, whether you have to Tanya Harding or something else, whatever it takes, this is now do or die for her. Don't actually Tanya Harding this, by the way. Don't don't. We need everybody fully for, formed and functional, please. You can see it. She chooses to start at the 19s here. Forty-five to get things going. Will Paula continue with her consistency in scoring? Three big singles there. Doesn't fully edge out an advantage, but does make the statement known that she is still locked in and engaged here. Trying to work off that dart. Can she fit one in there? Not quite. 47 on the score. Will Paula be able to make some waves of herself? Going down to the 19s, joining her. She loves those 19s, especially when she starts uh, shooting a different number than going back to them. Finding a 1-3-3 to three, three there for Murphy. Definitely making her presence known now. Sixty there for Tank. So now the advantage fully is in Paula's hand. The throw is effectively stolen away from her. She's just going to try to continue to apply pressure here. Did choose to start the 20s there. S staying on him here to continue to bring down the score. So she's gone 61, 33, and then 60 in this one so far, giving a nice good pace to her scoring. This is where the brain starts playing some mi evil mind tricks here. At least if I'm in Tink's shoes, starting to think about that difference in point spread, the difference in leg differential. And these are all things that you have to try to stop thinking about when throwing. In fact, the only thing you should be thinking about is visualizing your target in your mind, uh, all things considered. You already have the game plan encoded in your brain before you even walk up. You should be a autopilot-like zombie, ideally. Line 76 so far. Make it 96 for her there. 152 is the first out set up here. Paula being on match point, she is so far dictating the pace of this one. Forty-five there for Chris does not get her to a finish. Of course, 
need to just try to focus on staying with that positive mentality that she's had. And it ain't over till it's over. AD scored so far 72 remaining. How will she choose to clean it up on this last start? Did go for the trip 16 there, but a single will suffice. More than enough to get herself out in front. Getting her down to a two dart finish at that. Chris going to look to make sure she hits at least uh, 79 points here. Or sorry, 89 points here to leave a finish. There's the 80 done to 19. Just staying on. Does stay on there. Hits 100. That will do. But of course, it only matters if Paula doesn't hit this out here. For the match and her fourth title. On the wire there. And do apologize on my bad math there. With her staying for the 100, it was actually an error just because of the fact that there is no finish for 159. First time math guy here. <laughs> Don't mind me. But does find 62. Again, applying a little bit of pressure here on Paula. Something to consider. But, of course, right now all she's doing is thinking about double 20. Double 20 and double 20. And does get it there. Dramatic pause to make sure. And that is it. As they were having a long wait there, she said, what, what was that? That was the most anticlimactic double in a finals that might have ever finaled there. That's so funny. As you can see, Paula Murphy does have a smile on her face. Big shout out to Laura for stepping up to chalk that. Of course, shout out to Chris there as she did have a good run at it. Did get a leg in the final there, but unfortunately just could not get it done. But does.